For our discussion on the surface integral of a vector field, we're going to look at this from the perspective of flux. Flux gives us a net measurement of the amount of force that's passing through a surface. Let's consider some surface S, and we're going to think of this as like a piece of fabric, or a piece of mesh, or something where a fluid or a force could pass through it. And let's look at our vector field, cap F, that is moving through this surface. Let's focus our attention on one of these vectors in the vector field. And what we're after is the amount of this force that is perpendicular to the surface. So let's consider this line that is in the tangent plane to the surface at this point. And we can decompose this force vector into two components where one of them is considered to be the component of force that is acting perpendicular to that tangent plane, and the other component, we could say, is acting in the direction of that tangent plane. So this can be thought of like the normal component and the tangential component of the force vector. Now let's consider this unit normal vector, and we'll call it n. This normal vector is perpendicular to the tangent plane to the surface at that point, this normal vector has a magnitude that's equal to 1, and this normal vector is going to help us find the normal component of the force vector. This normal component of our force vector is the portion of the force that is acting perpendicular to the surface, and it's that value or that quantity that we're going to use to calculate the flux. The flux is going to be determined by adding up all of those normal components over the entire surface. Let's notice that the normal component of this force vector is the same thing as the scalar projection of f onto n, which is calculated by f dot n over mag n. And since the magnitude of n is 1, since it was a unit vector, that normal component is simply f dot n. So this is a loose explanation of why the flux integral is determined by adding up infinitely many of those normal components over the entire surface. The flux integral has a notation f dot ds, but this is simply a shorthand for the surface integral over s that is calculated by taking the dot product of f dot normal vector and then integrating over that surface. So this version of our flux integral is what we're actually going to use to evaluate it. So we're going to look at two main cases. The first is where the surface S is defined parametrically. If that's the case, then what we end up with as a formula for evaluating this flux integral is this one here. And let's look at a short derivation of this formula. This flux integral notation evaluated by looking at the dot product of the vector function with a vector that is perpendicular to the surface. But let's consider where we might find such a normal vector. Remember we said that n was perpendicular to the surface, which means that it's also perpendicular to the tangent plane at that point. If we have our surface defined parametrically, we know that the partial of r with respect to u and the partial of r with respect to v are both in that tangent plane. And so if we cross product these two vectors, we get a vector that is then perpendicular to the tangent plane. But our normal vector needs to also be a unit vector, so we can consider this cross product divided by its own magnitude, so that now we have a normal vector whose magnitude is 1. If we then plug this quantity into our flux integral, and then substitute in for ds the tiny area of that parallelogram, which we have seen to be the magnitude of that cross product, these magnitudes cancel each other out, and we end up with a version of our flux integral that's something that we can actually calculate. It'll be the double integral over the domain region, where d is the domain of the parametric equations for the surface. Our integral is going to be composed of the vector field with those parametric equations plugged into it, so we could say evaluated at those parametric equations, but for now I'm just going to leave that part out. To highlight the simplified version of our flux integral, which is f dot this cross product dA. And this is what we use to calculate the flux when our surface is defined parametrically. But if our surface is just given as a function of x and y, we can leave our vector field in terms of x and y, and using those components, all functions of x and y, our surface integral can be evaluated using this formula, where p, q, and r are the components of the vector field, and these first partial derivatives are calculated from the surface function. 